Hi, so okay, today we're going to be doing particle motion problems. Okay, um, and so with these particle motion problems, they're going to be along a curve, just like the ones we did with parametric equations, because that's an example of a vectored value function. So, of course, we did particle motion along a line, and then we started talking about along a curve. And so if we can write our parametric equations as vector value functions, then we can definitely do particle motion problems with other type of vector value functions. Really the way that we look at it, rather than something new and different. So if you take a look at our vector here, vector r, it's a function of time here in our components with um, our standard unit vector i and j um, are functions of t. This would be x of t, this is y of t. And same thing going on over here in number two. So let me take that scribble out because you're probably trying to copy this down into your notes, which you should be doing. It should go into your notes. And I get to talk about a few other things that are in here. So in number one, you're probably looking at it and you're like, oh, speed. I remember speed. So when we did speed before, it was the absolute value of velocity. Okay. And so we're going to talk a little bit about what looks like absolute value of velocity. But the speed in this case is found by doing the absolute value of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared. Okay? And so it's basically saying the square root of dx over dt squared plus dy over dt squared. So this looks very much like what we're using when we're trying to find um, the arc length. So that's going to give us um, an indication of something else that we're going to talk about. Um, okay, so right here, it's also called our magnitude. Okay, so um, vectors have direction, and it also um, describes the speed, but the length of it is also called our magnitude. So that's what's going to help us find our total distance, which leads to number two, if you were writing down number two, because I think you should have had number one down. If you didn't get number two, you can always get it later, but let me tell you about distance. So the distance, up, oh, I should say total distance, is found by integrating from A to B, okay, and A and B are going to be some values of T, write that as equal to t. Okay, so um, this formula for speed with respect to t, what this equals is the integral of magnitude of our velocity function. And if it's a function of t, then we write it as this. So the double bars that you see, they don't mean take the absolute value twice. Um, that's a way of indicating magnitude. Okay, and it's something that we use for vectors. This is supposed to be a b. Okay, that's an equals. So there we have it. We have formulas that we can use for our example problems. So let's take a look at how we can do them. Again, if you didn't get number two done yet, don't worry about it. You'll definitely see it in a little bit. Okay, so in number one, it asks for the particle speed and direction motion at the given value of t. Okay, so in um, our vector that's given, it also tells us that t is equal to zero. So what we want to do is find the velocity. Um, this is kind of like saying our position. And plug in zero to see what we get. 
Um, this is because we want to be able to find um, x prime of t or dx over dt. And uh, dy over dt or um, y prime of t. So let's actually figure this out. So if we do the first one, it's going to be negative 2 sine of 2t times vector i. And we also have here um, the derivative of 2 sine of t would be 2 cosine of t vector j. And if the vectors i and j are confusing, you, just all we did was take the derivative of our components. Okay, and that's here. So now we're going to plug in 0 for t. Uh, there's our plus sign. We're going to get rid of this. Okay, this is supposed to be just 2 times 0, not a minus sign. So hopefully you have that written there. Okay, so that's really the sign of 0, and that's going to be 0 times negative 2 is 0. So we have the 0 vector i, and over here, the cosine of 0 is 1, so we have plus 2 vector j. Okay, so our speed is going to be the square root of 0 squared plus 2 squared, and so it's the square root of 4, and square root of 4 is 2. And there we have it. So there's one more thing left um, before we get to number 2, and it's just the direction of motion. So the direction of motion is actually like half of the magnitude, which is also like our formula that we just used for speed, okay? Um, it has here our components, which are 0 and 2. So we actually just do half of our vector here. And so if we take half of 0, we still have 0. And we take half of 2, we still have, well, we don't still have 2. We take half of 2, we get 1. So we still have an answer, and it would just be vector j. Now, if you are writing it um, in vector form, if let's say you were just writing uh, our previous answer as, okay, um, well, from here and here as the vector 0, 2, this is something you may have seen in other classes. You're just taking half of that. Okay, and so that still gives you 1, 0, or I should say 0, 1, sorry. So if you, again, put it back into this form, it's vector i. Okay, they're both the same thing. So if you want to write the answer either way, that is fine. Okay, so let's take a look at the distance the particle travels along the path from t equals 0 to t equals 2 pi over 3 when the path in the plane is given by our vector value function there, number two. All right, I gave you some time to maybe jot it down. If not, again, hopefully you'll have time soon. Okay, so the distance the particle travels, and remember I went through distance with you. Um, you're going to have to integrate that square root function that we were working with have respect to t. Now it's going from when t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 2 pi over 3. There should be an equals. That's supposed to be a 2. All right. So let's see what we fill in. So we're given that vector r of t is 1 minus cosine of t times vector i and t minus sine of t times vector j. So I just wrote in this form um, for space and to just kind of 
uh, go over that vector notation with you once again. I just showed you it in the last question. So now if we're taking the derivative, this is x of t and this is y of t, okay? Derivative of x with respect to t, that's going to be um, negative or actually say positive sine of t because it was a negative cosine of t already and the derivative of cosine of t would be negative sine of t so it becomes positive and dy over dt is going to be 1 minus a cosine of t so now we have to square both of these in here so make sure you get that down And let's keep going. All right then. So let's just square what we need to here. So we have sine squared of t. And if we FOIL this out, you know, distribute our binomial to itself, we get 1 minus a 2 cosine of t plus a cosine squared of t with respect to t and from here we do have I'm just square root a sine squared of t and a cosine squared of t so that's 1 and 2 minus 2 cosine of t is under the square root so at this point Okay, so um, there is a double angle formula that you can use there. I'm sorry, half angle formula. It's usually double angle that you can use to get uh, to evaluate it by hand. Um, I can definitely go over that with you, um, but it's it's not really used on the AP exam. So I would say that at this point or the other, you can plug it into your graphing calculator. It is going to give you 2 or 2.0000. So definitely rounds out to be an exact answer of 2. And that is your distance that the particle travels along its curved. Okay, it's its curved path. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, when you are on the AP exam, you don't have to write when you're using the graphing calculator. It will be a graphing calculator question. Um, and you don't have to use like the arrows everywhere. You can just kind of go over it once or twice to make it look like a bold font. Um, once again, I like the arrows because whenever I do this, it just looks sloppier. So um, what's best is what comes clearly in your notes that you're able to read it I'm able to read it, an AP reader is able to read it, everybody's able to read it, even in college and beyond. All right, so hopefully you had a good time. Let me know if uh, you have questions. All right, and here we go. Bye.